Hey guys, welcome to this uh, special crossover event with Sutro Side Talk. I'm your host, uh, Danny Benson, and I am joined today by Kamran Shustar and James Seelig. And this is our review of uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. If you want to see the uh, video version of this review, it'll be up on my website, uh, third planet www.thirdplanet.news uh, it'll also be on our youtube channel third planet from the black hole and if you want to listen to the audio version of this you could uh, find that at sutro side talk on various podcast platforms pretty much any uh, podcast platform you look for it'll be there pretty much all right but, yeah this uh movie came out you could watch it in theaters or on hbo max so honestly it's pretty easy to go check out at this point and it's the only blockbuster we've gotten for a while. So uh, it's nice to have a fun summer movie type thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm having my second vaccine shot next Saturday. And I'm hoping that this movie being like the only blockbuster movie in theaters right now that people give a shit about, that it'll still be around in a month. So I could see it when I'm fully 100% like immune and everything and actually see it in a theater for the first time. Yeah, this is a movie you want to see in like IMAX or something. It's really, really good with that uh, way. I can shot. just imagine that final Hong Kong fight with all the colors of the city and stuff just in IMAX. It looks amazing, uh, probably. I, I can say with uh, without a doubt, it, it is pretty nice uh, because uh, I did go see it in IMAX on the night nice. it came out. I, I ended up buying out uh, nine tickets, but I organized it in a proper way to have it out as a grid. So it was 81 seats uh, <laughs> to myself and two others. And oh, my God. <laughs> it was uh, pretty enjoyable. I, I was honestly, because I was at that point, I thought I was going to be running out the whole theater uh, when there was allowed. But I realized you couldn't do that with an IMAX theater. So I was like, well, what's the Aww. next best thing? And I just pretty much accounted that kind of budget and did that there instead. So I could make sure I was doing it safely since I feel like I am one of the few people that have yet to be vaccinated out of everyone we know. <laughs> so... Yeah, so uh, we're going to get into the movie and uh, we'll do spoiler free first and we'll let you guys know when we start talking about spoilers so you can uh, skip ahead or whatever. If you're watching the video version, I'll let you know uh, what timestamp to stick to uh, or to skip to, I guess, when we get done talking about spoilers, but it'll probably be uh, towards the end of the, the video anyway. So anyways, guys, I guess uh, do you want to start out with uh, what you didn't like about the movie so that way we could end it more on a positive note sure I guess we could do that okay I guess starting off um, I thought like it, it's funny because I came in with a lot of hype I came in with I guess expectations especially after seeing previous films and you know, you get from the trailers a very, very skewed or like very one sided perspective. And I'm like, is this actually going to be the full movie? If it is, it's already a pre disappointing aspect that I'm seeing with it. And we get that. And, you know, I'm, I, I am somewhat disappointed with it, uh, just in terms of like, it's very much one sided in terms of the film style. It is incredibly simplistic, which I get it was actually its strength in terms of the average movie audience. Like you see a lot of people are saying they love it. They love just like, you know, they got monster battles. That's what people wanted and that's what they got. And, you know, that's really cool and all, but at the same time, I, was, I guess I was looking for more that you'd normally get in like other Kaiju films and stuff like that. And it very much lacks that here. It's like way too simplistic for my taste. Um, there's not really much of a story it's just kind of like, hey, we have to go here. And then that's about it. And there's not much else to be said. Like, there's a lot of different things that are missing from it that I, I guess I'll get to later since it's more spoiler filled. But it's missing a lot of things. It doesn't really clear up a lot of like explanations of like, oh, but what about this? Or what about that? And this like, things like that. It, it very much, it's lacking a lot. And it overall, I'd say it was honestly like, okay to good for me yeah i kind of feel the same i was a little bit disappointed and i think the main reason is that i i was so hyped after king of the monsters being way way better than i was expecting it to be and there were so many awesome kaiju in that movie in, including like most of the 
like the favorites like Rodan, Mothra, uh, Ghidorah was even in it. And just like the, it was a huge scale story and just like it spanned the whole world. It was it was really cool and impressive. But this one, it's it felt a little bit less exciting because it it is almost exclusively just Kong and Godzilla, which still cool. But it just it did feel like a step down from King of the Monsters in terms of scale, um, and yeah, in terms of th- like the thin story, the, I for like half of this movie kept forgetting like wait why is Kong involved in this like they said that they needed him as a guide of sorts not to get into spoilers to, for like where they need him for but it I just kept going wait are they just bringing him along just in case they need a titan to help out and he was the only one that they could work with I don't know and it was also a little bit weird that for several moments in the story they were just like okay we need to move Kong and we're gonna skip over how we like sedated him and got him on the boat and, and everything it's just he we we got that done and it just felt a little bit weird that you're trying to set up kong is like he is just as powerful as godzilla just as dangerous but the humans have no problem handling him whatsoever so it it felt a little bit weird but i don't know uh, other than so I guess that's the only thing that I really dis or didn't like is just like the story is thin it's, and yeah, it's it felt just like very a, shallow yeah and it felt like a step down from in terms of scale from King of the Monsters but if I hadn't been so hyped from King of the Monsters I still you know I texted Cameron after I finished it I was like it was still it was a fun movie you know the story yeah. is just kind of in but it's still fun to watch very much so Okay, so I'm the odd one out here because I meant I mentioned this in uh, if you want you know our full thoughts on it, go watch our uh, rewatch slash legendary uh, Godzilla podcast review that me and Kamran did where we talk about all the legendary movies along with the rewatch movies. And I mentioned that I wasn't a huge fan of King of the Monsters because you know, and I, I said this in the video. There's two ways you can go about a Godzilla movie. You could either lean in and make it super serious and something like the original 54 or Shin Godzilla, or you can really lean into the cheese and just have complete fun with it. Like a lot of other Godzilla movies and King of the Monsters didn't know what it wanted to be in my eyes. It tried to be both tried to be super serious and really corny and fun at the same time. And I think that's why that movie for me personally just doesn't work, but you know, for this movie, it really does lean into the cheese and the corniness of it all. Mm, so yeah. you do end up getting a paper thin plot and everything, but there's still some things that they do in this movie that really didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So like, uh, actually it would be spoilers if we talk about this, but I mean, it's all, it's so minuscule that I don't even know if it would be a spoiler, but um, trying to think here yeah the plot is really stupid like their whole plan because they mentioned it in the trailers you know the world needs kong you know and and everything it's (laughs) they say all throughout the movie like kong's anthropologist that um, you know, screw it. We're just going to talk about spoilers throughout the video. Thank you. I was like, man, I yeah, we can't do it. this. Yeah, like, spoiler it's alert. really hard. Yeah. You guys probably already know the spoilers already. Just go watch it. Like, it's you yeah. can go watch it. It's so easy to go watch. Just Yeah, d- just go watch it. It's Either way, you're going to get something out of it. Yeah, it's definitely at least worth 15 bucks for like a month subscription to HBO Max. It's worth yeah, that. Because you're going to get that plus Mortal Kombat's coming out in a couple weeks. And, and then, you know, hundreds of like, uh, it, there's literally so yeah. much. It's actually worth it. Anyway, anyway, yeah, just at least for a month. <laughs> so, okay, so a little spoiler alert. Um, you know, Doctor Serizawa's son's in the movie for some reason. He has one or two lines and he dies immediately. Why was he yeah. in the movie? And what an insult to Serizawa's character. And the worst part. Yeah, they was, made his son a villain. Yeah, I I had to point out to everyone that that was his son, and everyone's like, reaction was the same. Of that was his son, and I'm yeah. like, dude. The only Asian guy in the movie is the only <laughs> other Asian guy from the previous movie's son. How's that look? And <laughs> right, so, so yeah. they the only reason I knew because I was I was on top of this movie. Every single thing that was being revealed as it was coming, and they're like, "Yo, this dude's Ren Serizawa. He's Doctor Serizawa's son." Which you've watched the previous Godzilla films, you know, he's a scientist. If you watch the interviews, if you watch it, yes. but yeah, no, if you watch like 
the previous films, you know, like Sarah's always the one that's been had like the biggest connection with Godzilla and stuff. And, you know, he's very much like coexistence. I'm very much like we have to make sure Godzilla survives. Yeah. He sacrifices himself for Godzilla. Yeah. yeah. And you have his son without any context that he's even his son. They're working for the evil corporation Apex. And he's the pilot of Mecha Godzilla trying to kill Godzilla. And you're like, okay, I'm missing something happened between yeah. here and we're getting no we get no explanation of they should have just made him the main villain and have it that he blames godzilla for his dad's death and he wants yeah. to kill him that like, would that have been way been more fine. interesting yeah, yeah. I, I honestly feel like i'm just guessing i'm completely yeah. guessing but i feel like him and his son probably differed in views and they like basically stopped talking to each other after a long time he's probably like yeah. my dad wasn't there for me cared more about a giant monster than he did me like that's what i'm feeling uh, probably yeah happened. it but, was a. Uh, Another thing too is that like they uh, they build up all throughout the movie like the anthropologist tell that's in charge of Kong like tells everybody over and over again if we take Kong off the island Godzilla is gonna come for him and they're shocked when Godzilla comes after them when they have Kong and it's just I don't well, know yeah. this is the one thing we didn't want to happen which I yeah. I get like they they do say like oh we made sure we ch- we we've studied his um his like kind of routine patrol types he does around the world and it's yeah. like okay cool this isn't like yeah he shouldn't be in this area this isn't like his area but it's like the minute like you know he could sense it and he's like oh shit dude it's like that whole thing of that meme where kong yeah. exists and yeah. godzilla's like and i took that personally <laughs> yeah <laughs> it, and it I, makes me wonder how did how does skull island shield kong from being discovered by godzilla in the first place it's like the mist or something like yeah. the way it's positioning i love that they also mentioned like the storm once like at some point overtook skull island and that's why he lives in that dome now that's like the only nice place on the island i'm just like wait a minute why is there a perpetual storm around skull island now that yeah. seems important i hated I, I, that i hated that they did that too because i'm just like so all those creatures we saw in skull island and the native tribe and everything yeah, gone, gone? Yeah, so like, it, it seems so like messed that, up. It's so weird because it's like the I guess it's supposed to be over time, like before it wasn't as big, and over time the storm has been enroaching on the island itself and eventually would swallow it up. And yeah, you get the Ewees are completely wiped out that you got to see in Skull Island, even though that movie itself like lacks so much uh character stuff, but that's another story. It's actually and one of the best monsterverse movies. Personally, I think it's honestly the weakest, but, but you're wrong, comrade. You're I wrong. thought it was so fun. Yeah, I, really, yeah, I think that that's got that movie's got the best characters. I think honestly, oh, they yeah. were. I, yeah, completely different. Opinion, it just but... also has too many. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, all of these movies no... got way too many characters. There's, yeah, um, but anyway, Which, yeah, okay. um, you got like all this stuff happening at Skull Island, and you're like, okay, it's like cartoonish, like Kong, just like, oh, I gotta get up and yeah, I always like, like my washing routine. and throw my. <laughs> stick at the gets shingle. up takes a shower in the waterfall and you got the little girl that survived and it's like oh it's kind of a cool story but it's like the moment you get that trailer where you see the little girl and you're seeing kong and you're just like oh my god okay i see where we're going with this fine like okay do Dude, which, do whatever you're doing i like their relationship i like yeah. that they could like do sign like i like that moment where kong speaks back to her yeah i oh, yeah. love that scene but i also hate it because at the same time like the the um the the woman studying him i forget what she dr was, andrews the zoologist uh eileen andrews she's how do like... you remember these people's names comrade <laughs> <gasps> like it... she is like her mind is blown that kong is literally like speaking in sign language to this little girl and i'm like wait a minute there's no way you've been studying kong for any period of time longer than like a few months and you don't think he's intelligent. He literally uses tools all the time. And you're like, oh my God, Kong is intelligent. He can speak. I've been trying to teach him sign language, but it didn't work. And I'm just like, there's no way you're an actually decent, like zoologist or whatever. And you didn't pick up on Kong is actually intelligent. I thought, for did you ever, wait, did, in the movie itself, did she actually say like I didn't know he was intelligent or like? Well, no, it's just because I knew she was like she was like saying it. like I, that's I, the I, thing. Like I was I going did... off of her reaction of she's just like oh holy crap he knows sign language. I guess and the only thing I could say in that defense would be like 
she's been trying and she's like, oh, you know, she says like, I, I, you know, I felt like it was registering with him, but I didn't understand why he wouldn't, you know, talk to me. And it's like that whole thing of just anything, I guess, if you had a kid and they never talked to you, but someone else comes over and all of a sudden that kid is showing like all these receptions that you didn't get. And you're just like, what the hell? Like, it's just like a, Mm. a shock to you. But at the same time too, isn't this whole thing, like this whole place, like you're watching everything so you could see everything happening. Yeah. Yeah. So they couldn't a see a little girl thing. doing sign language with a monkey the whole time. Right. Like, what's going on? <laughs> like, what? Yeah. So if you guys haven't noticed, the plot of this movie is really stupid. And I'm not yeah. going to sit here and act like all the other Godzilla movies haven't had, like, some of the dumbest plots on the planet. I, I think but... the difference here for me is it feels like at least with those ones, even though they get campy and they get ridiculous, it feels like they're trying. That's the big difference here. I yeah. definitely I definitely think that they're trying with this one. It's just it's still a little bit of that leftover of them trying to be more serious t- trying to take it a little bit more serious instead of just leaning into the cheese and having fun. And you know, I think this really just needed to be a turn your brain off movie and it works that way. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think For my sure. one last thing that I didn't like about the movie is that uh when Godzilla first shows up in Florida focus on that like don't just show us a couple quick clips of him torching uh the facility in Florida. yeah focus i want to see a whole scene just dedicated to godzilla just leveling that whole place i mean that's just godzilla in a nutshell in this whole movie is just like hey can we get some godzilla and it's like no it's like but his name's in the title it's like so we don't want to put him in this movie I, mean, like... I, I do get why they did that though because kong only got one movie so they're trying to like expand on him godzilla's gotten two so i mean it's kind of yeah. it makes sense so I was very intrigued by like at this point in this universe, it is like Titans are a known quantity in the world. Like mm-hmm. everyone knows that ev- every once in a while they're going to make landfall and they're going to fuck shit up. So there's like specific Titan. Uh, what do you call them? Like uh, shelters mm-hmm. like yeah. for people to go to. And I was like, that's really interesting. I like that there is like, the world has reacted to the return of the Titans, but it felt like that was literally the only thing that they did. It was like, oh, there's, there's shelters, but there weren't like, I mean, Apex had those like super ships or whatever that could like survive the traveling. I know. Spoilers, I think- this, the hollow earth, which they, they did set up in the last one. They mentioned yeah, they it did. for like a second as like, oh, that's how Godzilla gets around. But I don't think that's how he gets around anymore. Cause like, the hollow earth is like huge. It's like a whole other world. And, and I moving did find into the good things. Yeah. Moving into the good things. I like the hollow earth stuff and I like that. Yeah. Yeah. They, I like that they made Kong kind of our guide through that world. That, that was his kind of, that's his realm of the, of the things and all that. Yeah. And I also, this too, I think Kong works. Kong always works really great as a sympathetic character. Mm. I was attached to him throughout the movie. I was just like, I want him like the guy i just want him to catch a break i'm like his whole island is just decimated he doesn't have his whole fan he's the last of his kind no family then they're taking him and they're tying him up putting him on this boat again carting him all over the world and they go and they tell him that there's family in this cave so there he might goes be in there family looking, maybe. There. yeah and they go there it's like so he goes all excited in there looking for him it's like that's so sad so Dude, they're traveling through the through the earth was so weird because they go like light speed for a second kong's just whatever. like Whoa. <laughs> and they're just like falling and of course kong is apparently like indestructible and he just survives I mean, that's the, the whole thing i think like titan mass is supposed to like any yeah. time you should deliver. yeah that's why like if you're only if you're human you're just like ah crap. but like i did love that they kind of say that like what if skull island was like a bit of the hollow earth that like, like an made, entrance almost yeah, like it somehow got to the surface or whatever yeah and so yeah when you get to the hollow earth like it is very much like skull island but like it hasn't been touched in century in like millennia and like there's new kaiju in there like the giant war bats or whatever which i thought were super interesting how it's like a flying snake uh, snake cobra thing where like the hood is its wings and i just i liked the effect of it wrapping around kong and like trying to suffocate him yeah, yeah like covering his face with the wings and i thought it was interesting that kong seemed proportionally sized to 
uh, the hollow earth. Like everything yeah. there is massive. So he doesn't look like a giant anymore. He looks like he's home. Yeah. But also the implications that his his people were intelligent enough to have like stone masonry and stuff like that. He's got a throne. Dude, in that. When, when they got there, I made the joke to myself that like, man, this movie shouldn't have been called Godzilla versus Kong. It should have been called Kong 2 Return of the King. <laughs> Yeah, I was <laughs> hoping that when he we picks up the axe. <laughs> it would have been cool if we did get a fight, like see Godzilla in the Hollow Earth and everything. But yeah, this this Dude, is I big... laughed so hard when he just like he shows up in Hong Kong, and he doesn't even attack Mecha Godzilla in the base. He's just like, oh hey, I can sense Kong. Oh in the that part, of the planet so, so just, like, good. Nuke breaths through the entire earth i was like kind of laughing at that <laughs> i like, yeah love... dude yeah there's, there's total fair fight they're totally it's still cool know. though i love that godzilla is just a bastard in this movie he is evil and i love it dude that he moment where, like terrible. like the when he, when the tunnel is finished and God, godzilla like roars down into the center of the earth and kong is like on the other side and he just roars back and i'm just like I like that. <laughs> yeah, it was stupid, but it's so funny. Uh, um, there is what was the other thing I was gonna say? Oh, this is kind of a, a personal thing. I have really always wanted to see a Kong versus Rodan fight, and I was just like, the Hollow Earth would have been a perfect opportunity to have a little Rodan cameo and have and a fight between them too. And because I was hoping that maybe we get a Rodan cameo on Skull Island, because I was like, that'd be a place I think where Rodan would be hiding out or something since he's like prehistoric but no still have to wait for that hopefully someday in the future we get that yeah i'm, I'm just hoping we get rodan in general uh, yeah. yeah but that's like i feel like we can talk about um the whole hashtag continue the monster verse at the end so oh, yeah another hashtag that. i think Yay. also another reason why i was a little bit disappointed with the story of this because i thought comron came up with a way cooler idea for a, a godzilla versus kong movie where like at the end of King of the Monsters, we saw a bunch of random kaiju kneeling to Godzilla. Yeah. And Kong is supposed to be a potentially rival alpha. Alpha, yeah. So what if he went around fighting other kaiju around the world and they're bowing to him? And then you have like literally a Marvel Civil War airplane scene type thing in a desert somewhere where both sides line up and it's just it's not just godzilla versus kong it's godzilla and his cro uh, cronies versus kong and his cronies and it's just epic fight and it i think i was so excited for that potentiality that i was just like oh it is just godzilla versus kong which is still good but could it's have been very better. like yeah, yeah they try to keep it as it's like i said they try to keep it as simple as possible to keep it very very bare bones um like keep it down to two technically four monsters really if you count warbat mm -hmm. and like they, they don't really do much else they don't want to over encumber anyone which i guess like it's like it's weird uh for a godzilla fan it's like oh king of the monsters makes sense it's all this cool stuff you're getting a lot in this and you're enjoying it whereas like i guess the average movie person's like there's so many things happening i don't know what's going on whereas like this one i feel like like I said, it's so it, it's so down to earth for anyone to enjoy. But if you're really into a lot of like the deeper stuff, you're basically going like, bro, why is this a two foot pool? Like, I thought this is going to be like something cooler than that. And it's like, that's what I, I feel you get from these kinds of things. At least I would this I don't know. I would have saved that for like a destroy all monsters type movie, something for sure. like that. They could still definitely and, do that. Oh, if back back would, to the yeah. bad things though. Um, yeah, you could have cut Millie Bobby Brown and all them. Out oh, of the movie. yeah, I, yeah. The movie dragged whenever she was on screen. There like, were a few characters that I was just like, yeah. man, why are they in this movie? That, that I like the conspiracy theorist. And he's funny but yeah i i didn't mind the team that was following kong i thought that was okay they didn't yeah i didn't i wasn't mad when they were on screen i was like okay they're just they're doing their thing i like the bond that kong has with the deaf girl and everything i yeah, i like the relationship gia was cool alone um with dr lynn and dr uh andrews though it was like that was kind of like the weird like 
cringy exposition a bit where it was like the whole Kong bows to no one. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh fucking, so we're about to see stupid. how that goes. Yeah, you could barely. Somebody did, though. He literally I'm, played I dead. have a feeling Kong just thrown... did. This isn't up and is this isn't loving this movie because it is very much so a Kong movie. It's so fucking Kong. And I'm just like, bro, come on, man. But also, no, but also, it's so simplistic. Like I said, I, I wanted something so much deeper, even if it was more Kong yeah, stuff. I literally just wanted the, a lot more. I think more. it needed to be more simple. <laughs> It, literally the only reason why godzilla fights kong is just because kong exists and he's just like i can't have a rival it's, it's i'm fine with like, that Dude, just pay tribute yeah. and that's all you need to do. it's like the whole uh uh it's freaking called um always sunny when they go to the restaurant it's just like go i need you to come yeah. pay tribute to me it's it's all you need to do is bow down it's so easy just do it and he's like oh no i don't i don't want to do that <laughs> I, I as much as I do avoided. feel bad that have how bad Kong did get stomped by Godzilla, especially oh, at the yeah. end. Like well, it was I love brutal. It. I was like, oh come yeah. on, get up. He just slices the yeah. shit out of his chest and like dislocates his shoulder and stuff. Yeah. I love he does the Riggs Murphy like just smashing his shoulder against a yeah. building to pop it back to place. But I was happy that they did give Kong a little uh yeah, redemption that he beats the monster that was almost about yeah, to kill god that was super yeah. like yeah. that moment where they're banding together to fight mecha yeah. godzilla and godzilla like also intelligent remembers like oh hey i remember when i uh hit the axe with my nuke breath it like supercharged it and fucked me up i was not expecting godzilla to get his ass kicked that badly by mecha godzilla yeah yeah, yeah it was brutal and then kong uh, comes and saves him because the girl's like he's not enemy and uh and yeah, I just I loved that Godzilla powers up the axe for Kong and then Kong just wrecks Mecha Godzilla. He gets yeah. his moment where he rips like, the head and spine out and everything. Cut yeah, one arm uh... off, cut the other arm off, cut one and then legs chop- off. it's like funny too though. Rip the head off. You're like Mecha Godzilla just with his tail is about to kill Kong. And it's just like, how do they get how do you save these two titans from Mecha Godzilla? Yo, but Josh, pour some whiskey on this here computer. <laughs> that was that was so stupid. Uh, this whole thing. Yeah, was like dumb. Millie Bobby Brown was not important in this movie. Her dad was like not important at all. Yeah, that, at all. that was that's what annoyed me. I'm like, you're you're bringing in the two characters from the previous movie, and you give them the, the shit end of the stick in terms of like what you could have had those characters do. And it was very it was depressing. Like the, the whole point, like you get all. I like I remember looking at the MDB when they first like were showing all the casting, and I'm like, dude, Lance Reddick is in this, and you know he's big. He's in John there for like Wick. a second. <laughs> yeah, he's he just has one line, and you're just you enjoy hearing his voice. You're just like, oh shit, it's Lance Reddick, and, and then that's it, and you're just like. Which, was he the leader of the the head of that company? No, he was with uh he was with um Kyle Chandler's character uh when Mecha Godzilla. Oh, out there. oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. The, he was the monarch director. It's like oh we feared the the and it's like you know he's a, he's got a very iconic voice. Um, yeah. but yeah, and I'm just like was that that was what you brought him in to do? It's just the line. I mean, I didn't okay. think that they were good characters in King of the Monsters either, so I was just like, eh, I didn't I mean, really like, care. That's not even, that's the thing, though. That's not, a, that was the dialogue in that film itself. Like, that was just poorly written dialogue that was talking down to an audience, like I said. Uh, it's like I said in the other video. I said they, the way they use the dialogue in King of the Monsters is they treat the audience like they're stupid, and they talk down to them, and they over-explain. They do over-explain, and it's very, like, some of the characters have like bad cheese where it's like, uh, it's kind of cringy, whatever. Um, but otherwise everything else about that film is amazing. And it's like, oh, they're, they're each movie, each movie has its own issue where it's like, it feels completely different, whether it's like, oh, this one's missing this, this one's missing that, but each one has a great strength that the other one might not have. And none of them seem to ever get everything down. This one still does not, um, definitely does not. And it's just weird how they haven't gotten anything correct yet on all fronts that you see with these different ones. Um, if we wanted to break it down, I could do a whole breakdown of why each one is what strength or what like negative is for each one. But that would, like I said, that's not really for here. I wonder how many times the uh, movie studios are going to have to see in the reviews that the human aspect of these movies are the least enjoyable parts before they're just like, you know what, maybe let's not focus on the humans. <laughs> yeah, and if they do, like, it's it's like the one that I, I feel like honestly was the closest was 2014, but that's like a, another thing entirely. Yeah, just because they had actually interesting characters, but also they really should not have 
axed uh, Brian Cranston, Cranston. Yeah, in it's the like first a, third yeah. of the movie. It's like I said, the 2014 one is, it's like it feels like a film, whereas the other three yeah. feel like blockbusters. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I still think Godzilla fans in general are waiting for that perfect Godzilla movie that I don't think that Toho or any other studios really given us outside of the 54 one. Honestly, like I said, Shin Godzilla is pretty much, I would say yeah, it's, it's I, that. It, that is what we want. I love Shin wanted. Godzilla. Yeah, it's yeah. so good. Like I said, I honestly still consider that a masterpiece. But yeah, I, uh, so the Mecha Godzilla stuff, I loved it. I thought that was so. Oh, yeah. It was really cool, yeah. Yeah, I, I that part fucking... when he, it was actually intimidating when that thing gained its own intelligence from yeah. King Ghidorah. And that was such a good scene. Look. Yeah, that, that was great because the dude's doing his stupid, like, yeah. you know, his evil CEO line, and you just see it turn, and you're just like, yeah. oh my God. And I, I just love that it's like it's right behind me, and they're all watching, just like, oh, <laughs> that, that was good. That was great. And then you got Serizawa just like, gets kicked the bucket via electrocution because of the, the the disconnection feedback yeah and i was even like wait he was literally getting like a bunch of errors why did he not take the helmet off maybe he, he just didn't think that it would even possibly kill him but yeah and it's like speaking weird. speaking of lack of explanation here so like besides Ren serizawa being serizawa's son and all that shit being what that is uh you get the two kiddo heads here and you get one is Mecha Godzilla, one is basically the pilot uh, structure for it's the for the pilot uh, for Ren Serizawa. And you know, at the end of King of the Monsters, you have um, Charles Dance's character, the eco terrorist leader. He is gaining a Ghidorah head, and it's the one specifically. I'm gonna get like really intricate here. It's specifically <laughs> the one that Godzilla rips off in like the waters outside of Mexico. Yeah. And in this one, though, it doesn't sound like either of them is that head. Because one, why would an eco-terrorist give a, a yeah. fucking head to a, a fucking corporation and not be there still in it and just be gone? That also would even be stupider. But you would assume then, oh, these are two of the heads from Boston because you see Godzilla eats one, which means like, oh, there's two others probably. And they got those two and utilized them here. And you just kind of go like, so what happened with the other head then? And that's where I had a theory. So I mean, before I was like half right. I'm like, okay, Michael Godzilla is going to be there. There's going to be a team up. And there was a team up. I thought also the one that would break them up from fighting would be Mothra. That did not happen, uh, even though they hinted at it in the last movie. But they... <laughs> I, I was thinking, you know, maybe they do either a mutant Ghidorah or a Mecha Ghidorah using that other head, and that other head is still out there, and you know, that still could happen. It's just uh, hard to say, but it's also you don't know because they fucking suck at explaining anything, so you don't know at all. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're giving this movie way too much credit, Comron. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm not giving it any credit. That's why I'm saying it didn't do anything. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't explain shit. Um. I love that Godzilla in Kong at the very last second or moment. Like, I just love the literal imagery of uh, Kong burying the hatchet. In the oh, ground. yeah. It's just like, we're cool. It <laughs> was so, I, I love that whole third act of just them fighting was great. The fight was really good in this. Dude, I thought yeah. the fights were really well shot. And Kong jumping through the skyscrapers was so interesting and cool. Like, you could yeah. see that he moves differently than than Godzilla would. And like, Godzilla's just like, I don't care about your buildings. I'm just going to cut them in half with my nuke breath. And it was yeah. a good matchup the way like yeah. Kong had to strategize to get away from Godzilla's breath. And Godzilla really didn't have any answers for the way Kong could you know, grab and move and everything. It was a, it was a fun fight. It was really, really good. I, you know, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed like, all. I just, like I said, turn your brain off type of movie. And I think that's the best way they could have gone. I think they could have gone even more in that direction. Yeah. Yeah. They definitely, um, I'd say like when Kong is running, you really get that sense of the, the, the power, like the dynamic there of just like, Oh dude, these are completely different class class titans here it, like you have kong hiding for his life because like if that fucking You're blast such a him, hater comrade i'm just saying like, i'm just saying you ha- he's like uh, dude if that shit hits me like it's not he gonna did be get hit once and it like burned the shit out of him dude he was like he fucking falls he goes down 
and he has to keep going and strategize like he has to strategize to really like maneuver him and dude yeah like there was a moment where he he climbed up to the top of a skyscraper like above where godzilla was looking and he like threw something behind godzilla to lure him to make him look away and he jumped on his back when he wasn't looking because he's just yeah. like literally thinking about traps and strategies, which is interesting. Did yeah. you notice how he tried to do the death move where he like rip would break yeah, uh, Godzilla's yes. jaw? I thought that was cool. They tried to do, pull that on Godzilla. Um, uh, I can't think of really anything else though in this movie. I I like the fights. I you know I I was saying too like my ideal like a Godzilla movie. I really want them to see to see legendary attempt is to do a straight up uh like war of the Mon- remember the video game war of the monsters yeah where it's mm-hmm. just like really really cheesy a tribute to the 50s b movies and you know the kaiju movies from japan and everything go that do, do a destroy all uh, monsters just movie. Do a- he just walks around earth and it's like you next come here <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, just, show you something. <laughs> just do a destroy all monsters movie because you got kong in there so you could do like a kong side and then godzilla and then you could throw rodan mothra have the, the you know the 50s flying saucers moving around just go as corny as cheesy like make it a borderline comedy and just with some really cool monster designs and really cool fights that's what i want to see legendary do next and you know if they want to try to do another serious movie I guess, but I don't think that we're really going to get a. They had their chance with 2014, and it's obvious the studio it, wanted yeah. to go with a different direction. So I say just go for the cheese, go for as fun as possible. You know, I don't think that over. I don't think Toho or Legendary are going to give us another really, really good, serious Godzilla movie because I think that they they got it. Toho got it with Shin, and I think that's the best they're going to get for a while. I, I will say before I get into the whole like, oh, what I want after this is um, I did like that they did change up a bit of like the kind of style of how Godzilla, they made him very much aquatic in the, like he's very aquatic yeah, in this film. like a shark. He, and yeah, that he, first fight in the water, he is terrifying in the water. There was no way Kong was going to beat him there. And even then too, they utilize uh, besides uh, in the water as a shark, but outside of the water, like a gator honestly mm-hmm. like he's straight up going there on all fours and you're just watching kong just like go like moving back on his back trying to get away and it's just interesting seeing him like that where it, it, it's cool kind of seeing like the different utilizations of godzilla kind of like you see him throughout the different era of japanese movies for this one like it's kind of cool not necessarily seeing like a full shift because you do see the differences in his design even though it's the same monster like it's fully connected you see different designs for the spikes you see like well, even in set. these recent legendary uh movies he's had different designs in each one yeah that's what i mean uh like you see the difference between like look at king of monsters look at 2014 and look at this one and like the spikes are completely different practically like they are they full they feel fully he beefs designed. up between like one of the two of the movies yeah but um yeah no it, the movement's really cool i <laughs> I thought it was hilarious uh, for the like the beginning and the end for Kong. They're just like ridiculous songs are just playing around as themes yeah. for him. Just like, oh. oh yeah, I thought that was dumb, <laughs> dude. So ridiculous. I, I loved in that aquatic fight. They make it very clear that like it's not just his nuke breath that's dangerous. Like his tail is insane. Everything like, about ev- yeah, you're just like it's everywhere. <laughs> they call him King of the Monsters for a reason, dude. At one point, he sliced like two battleships in half with one, like one tail whip. Yeah. But yeah. I guess following like, you know, what they were talking about, um they were saying like, you know, we wanted to do what we wanted to do for this movie, but we we're treating it as like a an end but also a bridge to a new beginning where they mm-hmm. can as the hashtag says, continue the monsters. And it's supposed to be like, hey, there's so much you can do here and it's like part of that disappointment. We get all these cool monsters in King of the Monsters and you're like, "Oh, these are really tight. They're unique. They're, you know, original." Yeah, I want to and, see more of Behemoth. That one, that one was really interesting to me. And you know, there is no mention of them at all in this. It's just kind of like, yeah, over time, basically, we they're all around. It's just we have identified two specific alphas now on the planet. Yet to show in Gyrus. And I know like Sam, bro. So like, <laughs> you have what they can do now is so many different things because it's like worst case scenario if they want to continue, but they 
don't have all the licenses they want. Like Godzilla already is now going to be back at Toho. Like it was supposed to in 2020, but it was the movie itself was delayed. So it should be now. Um, Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming with that, you know, Ghidorah, Mothra, Rodan also revert as well. And, you know, know, uh, they don't own Kong either. Kong is. Oh, I didn't uh, know that this was a problem. Yeah. And And Toho is very stingy. They, Man, they are, they are very, know. very specific in particular on what you can do. And even like if you go like check out Mondo's stuff, like they are very much like they have so much stuff going on. It is insane how Toe has been letting them do all this stuff. They're, they're in, pretty much actually they're very, very lenient right now on what they've been allowing people to do. Like it's pretty much a new like honestly, I've said before on the other video, but like a, a renaissance golden age of like new Godzilla merchandising and just culture mm. spread. In different facets but Man, that would be disappointing if kong godzilla versus kong would be like the last of these movies yeah. and you know kong is owned by universal like he's not a warner brothers or a legendary property either he's and in the public domain isn't he i'm not too sure i honestly huh. don't know that one i'm not like i'm not as first on kong as i am with godzilla so i honestly don't know that one i but, think he is he he jumps around from studio to studio because like rko the ones who owned him before are gone okay but you know the ones for sure we know they have are the ones they've created so behemoth methuselah Scylla, those three like ones that end muto technically like they created mm. those ones you have those four alive at the end of king of the monsters and what they can do here is multiple different things they could do a you know one shots for all these different monsters and they don't even have to be necessarily modern they could be period pieces because you see with like uh i think they're saying something with Scylla, like it's a. Uh, it dates back to like ancient greek myth and stuff so you can have an ancient greek movie with this uh titan and stuff like each one yeah, can have its own work. cool story whether it's modern or ancient or something or it could even be something where somewhere in between where it's like oh this is the 30s or whatever like they, they could do so much with these monsters plus like besides those uh original ones you could do more with um kong you could do kong with hollow earth you can do bc godzilla and bc kong not even that kong basically at the earlier iterations on hollow earth and stuff you could do different stories with that like hollow earth itself can spawn different eras that are j- besides just the modern kong exploration so there's so many different roads there um for godzilla uh i don't even i don't even care if you have kong with him or not at this point like you, it's, you don't need to um with godzilla they like it's like that podcaster he's like, like oh i i, I want to see what do you guys do at the roswell monarch facility and it just gets you thinking going like oh Ghidorah is just the beginning of the extraterrestrial monsters you can have there was a concept i believe for gigan you could bring in gigan and start doing that stuff mm. with like mecha Ghidorah or mutant Ghidorah, and then you have those monsters there and you bring in a legendary version of angiris and you still bring back rodan and have that mothra egg hatch that they were going to do but also they could do Mothra and Rodan movies like standalone. There's so much they can do. And it just depends, I guess, on how the feedback is for people, how people want to do this stuff. If Godzilla ain't in it, I'm not interested. I say if, <laughs> if Toho's not, I have no interest in any of the legendary original monsters. I just don't. I don't think that they're... There's a couple cool designs, but I don't think that they're anything that iconic i guess so i say if toho's just like okay that was great but we're gonna go do our own thing now and you know we're gonna take our monsters with us i say just do one more king kong movie with the the original monsters and finish it out and that's it just wrap the universe up and maybe leave it like open it enough to maybe where they could do something or just you know reboot it and do the the whole cheesy thing like uh like i said but if Toho says that oh, we're not going to let you use the monsters anymore. Just another King Kong movie to round everything out, wrap it up, and that's it. I would you just do a story where like Godzilla is missing and the rest of the kaiju are going crazy, so Kong has to bring him in line. Yeah, we ran out I, of, that's fine. Yeah. We just is on the top. We ran out of budget. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, Kong, we were, Kong has to return from Hollow Earth for the first time since he loses to Godzilla back to Godzilla's territory. Yeah, I did really yeah. like that they, Man, they that left it off so with sad. like sounds so stupid. Godzilla it is like the king of the surface world, and Kong is the king of like Hollow Earth. And they even set up a new like Hollow Earth monarch outpost. Oh, that yeah. was interesting. Yeah, like I said though, I, I honestly would rather I I would if it was finishing off with just some Kong movie, I'd be. 
heavily disappointed. I know um, you would, come on. Yeah. But no, I think they could. I really do think they could do more out of this and make these other monsters cool. Um, people just got to give it a chance and just see what they could do. And it doesn't even have to be just with film. You could be like, yo, here's the Rodan movie. Also, here's check out the Behemoth comic. Like, there's so many different aspects they can come out with this and just see how it goes. Especially now, uh, Legendary has their own comics line. Like, they have their own comics publishing now. So there's a lot they can do here. And I know they're doing a Kong and Godzilla prequel comic for each one leading up to GVK. And it's not out yet, I don't think. I was going to pick up the Godzilla one and then I guess probably get the Kong one digitally or something. But like, I don't know, there's just a lot you can do. I want to see them do more. I don't know if they can do it with Godzilla and Kong at least, but, you know, I think they should at least try to see what they can do with what they get, but still try to reach for the stars at the same time. Uh-huh. well i mean if it ends here on godzilla versus kong i'm fine with that i think we got a solid uh series of movies for the most part um you know and like i said i i enjoyed this movie i think it's a ton of fun you know go watch it forward it through the millie bobby brown scenes and just kind of you know, <laughs> turn your brain off and just have fun I, th- I like the monster designs i think the fights are some of the best that we've gotten um and it was uh, it was fun. Yeah. And I we all get... know who the one true king is. That's all that matters. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't get past like Millie Bobby Brown's friend being Fire Fist from Deadpool Oh, that's 2. right. I forgot. I didn't recognize him until halfway through. I'm just like, is that that kid from Deadpool 2? I was like, damn, that kid lost some weight. Still a little chalky yeah. though. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I just I, I I'm glad I forgot half of that movie, so I didn't have to care about. That. I didn't have to think about that for GB. <laughs> UK at all. Just like, You're, you know. We're going to make the whole world all bish. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so yeah, that's Godzilla versus Kong. And yeah, it's, dude, it's out there for a month on HBO Max. Uh, you have a month to watch it. Otherwise, you know, buy it or watch it in the theaters if you can. If you're vaccinated, go see in the theaters. Or if you're crazy like me, go buy out the theater. Uh, if you're not <laughs> vaccinated, that's, you can always do that too. Uh, but, you know, yeah. Just uh, check out the movie, and you know, HBO Max also has the other three, along with all the Showa Godzilla movies. So you got a you got a lot that you can go through there. It's a good time. Yeah. So I think that officially wraps up our me and Comron's whole Godzilla series that we've been doing uh, until Godzilla. What's this new anime coming out? Uh, Godzilla Singular Point uh, that'll be on yeah. Netflix. Currently out on Netflix Japan. Uh, no exact date for Netflix USA and other countries i guess but well we'll deal with yeah. that as it comes <laughs> in, in i'm quite excited quite quite excited all right guys i am all godzilla out now just like i am all dc'd out and i need a break from both those franchises dc a break forever well, godzilla, dc apparently wants a break from those movies too because they uh, canceled a couple more <laughs> oh, no, they canceled everything <laughs> <sighs> And uh, just a temporary break from Godzilla, though. I'll probably get back to watching more Godzilla content in the coming month. So anyways, guys, uh, Kamran, James, where can we find you guys? You can go first. Uh, Okay. Uh, My Twitter handle and screen name in most other places as well is at InvaderJim124. And I host, no, I don't host. I'm a co-host on Sutra Side Talk with Comrade, (laughs) who does like 99% of the work. (laughs) I just got, sorry, at the same time, I got a notification from Twitter saying, you should follow Kaiju. I'm like, what? (laughs) That just shows how your phone listens to you, man. Oh my We're all God. listening to That's you. That's hilarious. It, it's so random. Anyway, uh, you can follow me at GoGoCalmzilla <laughs> on Twitter. And of course, yeah, follow Sutra Side Talk, where James and I, uh, every week, we'll talk about gaming movie TV show news. And of course, uh, myself and Brandon Blockstorff do Sutra Side Watch every other week, where we analyze movies. We got The Cut of Steel, which is currently on hiatus, but uh, you can listen to the three of us along with uh, the two Brandons talk about uh dc films and newest one was a two-part uh zack snyder's justice league episode that's also you can watch the video on third planet from the black hole and of course uh up to it down to it a show i do with some friends from school that is uh every now and again we do it and it's off the rails but of course you can follow sutra side talk on any podcast platform as well as uh twitter and instagram at sutra side talk and danny where can people find you 
Uh, you can find me at www.dannybenson.com. That has links to all my social media on there. You could also find me at www.thirdplanet.news, where we have a bunch of cool content coming out. Uh, I think we're on to Mortal Kombat videos now, so the Mortal Kombat video is going to be coming out uh, relatively soon in comparison to this. You could also find our podcast on uh, third the... The Third Planet Podcast. You can find that yeah, on Spotify. <laughs> yeah, you can find that on Spotify, <laughs> Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and we also have the video version on YouTube. So, I think that's it, guys. Yep. And long live the king. Yes, long live the king. And uh, we're recording this on Easter, so if you guys celebrate Easter, Roast happy rabbit. Easter. If you don't, then uh, I, don't, I don't know. Just have a nice Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you had a good Passover. I'm... Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, so guys. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you later. Take care. Adios.